Hi, my name is Peter McPherson. I'm the graduate coordinator in pharmacology, and I'm here to tell you everything hopefully you ever want to know about graduate pharmacology. So today's webinar, we're going to talk about pharmacology, career opportunities, graduate programs, applying to our program, the application process, how to pr generate a strong application, and tips for success in our graduate program. So let's start off with an introduction to pharmacology and the closely related health science field known as toxicology. So pharmacology is concerned with the study of drug actions and efficacy, the use of drugs as therapeutic agents in medicine or as tools in scientific research, and the development and regulation of pharmaceutical agents and other therapeutic products. Toxicology is concerned with the harmful biological effects of chemicals, the mechanisms by which these chemicals cause toxicity, and ways to prevent or improve such effects. In addition to therapeutic agents, toxicologists study many chemicals found in the environment that originate in nature or are synthesized by human activities. So let me tell you about research fields in pharmacology. Biochemical and molecular pharmacology is using molecular strategies and techniques to define mechanisms of drug action. For example, investigating how chemical structures correlate with drug efficacy, or how do drugs rectify biochemical abnormalities in illness or disease. Cardiovascular pharmacology concerns the effects of drugs on the heart, the vascular system, and those parts of the nervous and endocrine systems that participate in regulating cardiovascular function. For example, drug action on cardiac function, arterial pressure, or blood flow. Clinical pharmacology bridges basic pharmacology and clinical medicine, which includes pediatrics, internal medicine, anesthesia, and psychiatry. It strives to provide key information for rational therapeutics in clinical medicine in order to significantly impact health policy and healthcare delivery. It encompasses studies of drug delivery and drug efficacy in human subjects and patients, as well as pharmacoepidemiology, pharmacoeconomics, and bioinformatics approaches. Drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics. These concern the study of factors that impact drug concentration at the site of action in the body. Drug metabolism, or biotransformation, is concerned with the study of converting one chemical form of a drug into another, whereas pharmacokinetics involves the study of drug and metabolite concentrations in blood and body fluids, often in mathematical terms, to determine the time course of drug action. Drug addiction studies focuses on drugs which cause dependence, including both legal or clinical drugs and those which are non-clinical or street drugs. It concerns the mechanisms and risk factors that alter drug-taking behavior, as well as the consequences of drug exposure. Endocrine pharmacology, the study of drugs that are hormones or hormone der derivatives, or drugs that may modify the synthesis or action of normally secreted hormones. Immunopharmacology is the study of drugs designed to either suppress or augment the immune system. Neuropharmacology, or psychopharmacology. Neuropharmacology studies the effects of drugs on the nervous system, including the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves that carry information to and from different parts of the body. Psychopharmacology deals with drug effects on behavioral and cognitive functions. Pharmacogenetics relates variation in gene structure to variation in phenotypes associated with therapeutic or toxic responses to drugs and other foreign chemicals in human populations. Receptor pharmacology. Drug receptors can be broadly defined as any compound within the body that the drug binds to and causes an effect. Most often, drug receptors are the same receptors that bind endogenous hormones, neurotransmitters, or cytokines. Another important group of drug receptors are enzymes, either within our bodies or in invading pathogens. Signal, second messengers and signal transduction. Many therapeutic agents regulate signal transduction systems in our cells. 
And those relevant to drug action include adenylyl or guanidyl cyclases and second messengers, enzymatic regulation of calcium signaling or lipid second messengers, mitogen activated protein kinases, receptor tyrosine kinases, or steroid hormone receptor regulation. Toxicology. Toxicology is a science that deals with the harmful effects of chemical agents on biological systems and the means to prevent or ameliorate such effects. The toxic effects may be disturbances in growth patterns, discomfort, disease, or death of individuals, or they may be disruptions of whole ecosystems. The exogenous chemicals may be drugs, compounds synthesized by man, or agents originating in nature. So let me tell you about career opportunities in pharmacology. Many graduates opt, including yours truly, for a career in academia. Others opt for opportunities in pharmaceutical or biotechnology industries, and they may include positions in research laboratories, clinical studies coordinators, regulatory affairs, management and administration, or business development and venture capital. Still others opt for positions with government, either at the federal or provincial level, with Health Canada, or Ministry of Environment, or Ministry of Health at the provincial level. Still others consider positions in biomedical research laboratories, either in hospitals, research institutes, or university laboratories. So let me tell you about graduate programs in our department. Our department at the University of Toronto Pharmacology and Toxicology currently has 59 graduate faculty members and we currently have 105 graduate students. Half of them are in the master's program, half of them are in the PhD program. And they are located in the medical sciences building at the University of Toronto or affiliated hospitals or research institutes which include Centre for Addiction and Mental Health, Hospital for Sick Children, Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centre, St. Michael's Hospital, and the hospitals that comprise the University Health Network. So our graduate programs in pharmacology include the Master's of Science program and the PhD program. And in our Master's of Science program, we have two fields of study. We have a thesis-based master's program and a course-based master's program known as Applied Clinical Pharmacology. For our PhD program, entry may include the normal entry route where you finish a master's program, defend a thesis, and apply for the PhD program. Some master's students in our program opt to transfer into the PhD program after one year of study. And still others who have finished an undergraduate program opt to apply directly to the PhD program. So let me tell you about our course-based field of study in the Master's of Science program known as Applied Clinical Pharmacology. It's a new program, a two-year program, course-based, where you are focusing on clinical research. You're getting hands-on training and research skills, and there are opportunities for student placement. This might appeal to students who want to continue on in graduate school, but don't want to think about doing a thesis as part of their master's program. This is a program where you do not have to get a supervisor, and you do not get stipendial support. You do have to pay tuition. What to do? Should I apply for a master's thesis-based program or apply clinical pharmacology? It's a matter of personal preference. The nice thing is that you don't have to decide at the time of application. You can apply to both programs at the same time in the same application for the same fee. For those, of, for those students who are considering PhD program, what's the best option? to do a PhD transfer as a master's student, or to apply directly to the PhD program. It's a matter of personal preference. Some students after an undergraduate program are very sure of their desire to continue with the PhD program. Others may opt to start as a master's student and after a year decide if the, P if the program of study they're in in the laboratory is going to turn into a PhD program and if they have the support of their supervisor they may opt to transfer after a year. So 
So our graduate students are able to participate in various collaborative programs as part of their course of study, and that these include induction studies, biomedical toxicology, cardiovascular sciences, neuroscience, resuscitation sciences, and women's health. These collaborative programs students are able to apply to once they are registered in our graduate program. In addition, our department is the home department for the collaborative program in biomedical toxicology. For this program, students are required to complete one full course equivalent known as interdisciplinary toxicology, one half course graduate seminar in toxicology. In addition, they must attend a minimum of six academic seminars relate to toxicology during the tenure of their program. So let me tell you about applying to graduate pharmacology. What are the admission requirements? The minimum academic qualifications, you need to have a course average of B plus or better in your final year of study. If you're applying to the direct entry program, you need to have a course average of A minus or better in your final year of study. You also need to have the appropriate background courses and training, which I'll tell you about soon. And in addition, you need to have three letters of reference from professors familiar with your aptitude for a research degree. After this process, you may be selected for a personal interview with a pharmacology faculty member. The second requirement for the thesis-based program is to get acceptance and to secure a thesis supervisor who will oversee your program and provide you a stipendial support. So the stipendial support may take various forms. You may apply and receive external scholarships and awards. These may include uh, different awards from various agencies. Approximately 24% of our current students have external awards which help with uh, stipendial support. There are also University of Toronto awards, University of Toronto Open Fellowships which are available automatically for all of our applicants. And finally, support from supervisors grant, which will help, uh, help with stipendial support for your program. And I've listed here at the bottom the departmental stipends that our students currently receive in the master's and PhD programs for domestic and international students. So applying to our program, you're applying online. The online application portal is at our website, which I've listed here. You want to navigate to programs, graduate pharmacology, prospective students, and applying to pharmacology, and our application portal is there. So for September 2015 admission, the application deadlines for visa students has passed, but the application deadlines for our domestic applicants that include Canadian citizens, permanent residents, or U.S. citizens, you have to start the application by Friday, May 1, 2015, and all documentation that includes letters of reference, transcripts, have to be submitted by Monday, June 1st, 2015. So let me tell you about tips for a strong application to our program. Last year's admission statistics, we had 143 total applications. We gave out 56 provisional acceptances and we had 23 thesis-based students start in our program and 12 students start in, in the applied clinical pharmacology program. So what made those applicants able to be admitted into our program? First of all, our admission requirements. Academic qualifications. A course average of B plus or better might not be enough to get into our program. And usually what we are seeing recently is that our graduate program, the entry class has an average of A minus or better. So getting good marks is important. Appropriate background courses and training. We like to see students apply who have had previous experience in research at some form or another, either in a research project course or volunteering in the lab but we don't actually require you to have taken pharmacology in your undergraduate. We do prefer some background in either biochemistry or physiology or other health science related field. Letters of reference from professors. 
Ideally, what we're looking for are professors who can attest to your ability to succeed in a research program, in our graduate program, that have seen you do research. So ideally, what we're looking for here are letters of reference from professors who have supervised you as an undergraduate student in a research project, or you have volunteered in their laboratory and they can attest to your ability to do well in a graduate program. Personal interview with a pharmacology faculty member. This is your opportunity to shine and to show your passion and interest for pharmacology. So don't be afraid if you're invited for an interview to come in and tell us how excited you are about pharmacology and tell us what your experience is doing research in the past as an undergraduate. And finally, it's important if you're considering the thesis space program to be accepted by a thesis supervisor. You don't want to leave getting accepted by a thesis supervisor at the last minute. So it's, it's important to apply early if you can. The sooner you apply and if you're eligible, you may get accepted earlier. The people that are accepted earlier usually have a better chance of securing a, P, a master's or a PhD supervisor than those who wait until the last minute. So let me tell you about tips for success in our program. These are very practical tips that I tell any interested applicant. How to succeed in graduate school or in graduate pharmacology. It's important to continue to get great marks. Getting great marks keeps you eligible for awards. And it's important as a graduate student, especially if you're getting stipendial support, to apply for awards that can help support your study. Publish. It's important to always look at publishing your work. Publishing and getting good marks makes you more competitive for awards. And finally, it's also important to network. Use this opportunity to make contacts with your peers, to make contacts with people who might comprise your PhD committee or who are advisors in your master's program. These people are often useful later on to ask for letters of reference for, later, for other things that you want to do later. And finally, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. I'm happy to meet with anybody who's interested in applying to our program or who has any questions. Thank you very much. Do you have any statistics on like, uh, where graduates go after they finish the program if they don't opt for the academic route? in terms of what careers they choose and stuff like that? Right, so we don't actually, but I can tell you that um, I was in the program many, many years ago. And when I was in the program, all of my peers were looking for a career in academia. And a lot of them are in academia right now. I would say right now, most of our graduate students aren't looking at that route and they're looking at working in pharma. They're working, they want to look for work in pharmaceutical industry and biotech companies, health science related business, and a lot of them are going into those kinds of programs. I can tell you anecdotally, as a graduate coordinator, I've never had graduates come back and tell me I can't get a job. Um, and I can tell you that the four graduate students that I've had in the last few years, they've all received offers for positions before they graduated. So, yeah. Along the same lines, do the people who find these positions, do they end up having to go elsewhere in Canada to work or are they usually employed here in Toronto right. or in Ontario or? It depends on what they're looking for. So I know that there are I would say Toronto is not necessarily a big pharma hub, okay? Um, so many students will, that are willing to work somewhere else in North America are very employable. And others, there, the other thing though is that there are a lot of, of companies in Toronto that are consulting companies that basically provide advice for big pharma. 
and a lot of our students opt to go into uh, positions with those companies, and those companies are located in Toronto. But there are a number of smaller uh, companies that are biotech companies, pharma companies, but I would say Toronto isn't necessarily the headquarter city for a lot of big pharma. And what makes the U of T pharmacology, toxicology faculty or department department um, uh, different from others in Canada? Well, I can tell you it's probably, it's probably the largest one in Canada. We have the largest graduate faculty. Um, so, and also that makes students have a lot of options. So we have lots of different graduate faculty doing research in so many different areas and that gives our students lots of choice where they want to do the research. And we have this wonderful hub of research institutes that we're associated with, hospitals, um, CAMH, and students can get placed in many different interesting places. One more question. I'm not sure if you already went through this, but uh, what are, what's the breakdown of people that go into the uh, non-thesis-based master's program versus the uh, thesis-based master's program, right. how many? So, so last year was the first year we offered the course-based program, and we uh, capped it at 12. Um, this year, I think we're going to cap it at 15. Um, so r last year, we had uh, 23, I believe, um, thesis-based students, 12 course-based students. I should actually mention too about the, the Applied Clinical Pharmacology field of study. Course-based program, people might wonder, can I complete the uh, Applied Clinical Pharmacology program and be considered for entry into our PhD program? And the answer is absolutely yes. So it's a research degree and you're getting research training. It's just the difference is you're doing it in a course format and not in a thesis format. So you can still finish that uh, program and apply to our PhD program. The only difference there is you can't transfer into our PhD program, whereas you can with the thesis-based master's program. In terms of admission requirements, are the two programs the same? Admission requirements, they are roughly the same, I would say. Um, it depends on, it will depend on how many applicants we get to either program. And as I mentioned before, you can apply for both. Um, it has occurred in the past that some people who have not been able to, who have applied for both last year, maybe weren't able to get a supervisor, a thesis supervisor, and they opted instead to uh, proceed with the Applied Clinical Pharmacology program. How easy or difficult it is to get advanced standing in the course-based program? Ah, how, how hard, how easy is it? Basically, there are some, you can get course credit. If you've taken the equivalent course as an undergraduate student, you, don't, you aren't required to take that course as part of the program. Um, those kinds of questions are, I would have to ask those people to ask uh, the director of our Applied Clinical Pharmacology program, uh, Dr. Cindy Woodland, and she can give more details about that possibility.